ecosystem, we are considering broadly the forest ecosystem. In forest ecosystem, the different kinds of forests you are observing. Sometimes evergreen forest, deciduous forest, uh, semi-deciduous forest, arid forest and so on. So here the vegetation also changes from forest area to forest area. Some of the plants they are totally growing in water. We are calling them as aquatic plants or hydrophytes. So we will go to the whiteboard and we will discuss that. So we are hydrophytes. Hydrophytes are the plants which are aquatic, growing only in water. Without water, these plants cannot survive. And these organisms, these plants, we are calling them as hydrophytes. Then comes the mesophytes. Mesophytes are the plants which are totally terrestrial and here the plants are having broader leaves. The lamina or the area, leaf area is very large because they absorb maximum amount of sunlight and they undergo photosynthesis and also the plants compete for the light and grows taller and taller. Such a type of plants you are calling them as mesophytes. And the most important you are calling them as xerophytes. Xerophytic plants are those generally we are calling them as desertic plants where the availability of water is very less there the plants are growing. Say for example in deserts whatever plants are growing they are better adapted with the environment. Here the root system is very strong and roots are negatively geotropic, uh, sorry, positively geotropic. So as a result, the mother root grows very deep inside the ground and this root searches water inside the ground. So as a result, the root system becomes very strong. And aerial part, if you are observing, the leaves are converted into spines. It is only because to reduce or to check the water loss or the transpiration. If suppose the lamina or the blade of the leaf if it is broader, it, the transpiration will be very high. Maximum amount of water is converted into water vapor because of the stomata the water is lost from the plant. But in desertic plants or xerophytic plants, the leaves are converted into spines. If suppose little bit of broader leaves, the stomata are totally sunken. Or else sometimes, the succulent plants also you are observing. Here you can take an example of Opuntia. You can take an example of aloe vera and so on. Here the leaves are modified into spines to check the water loss. So in this way, the different kinds of plants you are observing. Along with this, the pole plants also you can see and grasslands you can see and so on. So here we will study one or two examples of food chain. 
and how energy flows and also how food web is formed. Just see, we will go back to, we will wash it, just see, food chain. Now see the food chain. The interrelationship between the different tropic levels in an ecosystem is called as food chain. One tropic level is uh, in connection with the other tropic level. It is like a chain. So we are calling it as a food chain. One example we will take and we will discuss regarding that. The grassland ecosystem. In grassland ecosystem, first we will start with the grass. That is the producer. Then, grass is eaten by the rabbit. This is the herbivore that is primary consumer. Then, rabbit is eaten by a fox. Then, this becomes the secondary consumer. And then, fox is eaten by the lion or else the tiger, you can get. We are considering it as the tertiary consumer. So, the different topic levels you observe here, the producer, it is becoming T1, consumer, primary, it is becoming T2. And secondary consumer, it is becoming T3. And tertiary consumer, it is becoming T4. So, as a result, different tropic levels you are observing. And one is eaten by other. So, we are calling it as prey-predator relationship. So, what is prey-predator relationship? Here, prey is one which is get eaten. Predator one is a uh, predator is one which eats. Say for example, here rabbit. Rabbit is eaten by fox. Rabbit becomes a prey. Fox becomes a predator. In next step, lion and fox. Lion is becoming a predator and fox is becoming a prey. So in this way, prey predator relationship we are observing. I mean food chain, this prey-predator relationship plays very important role. This is a food chain. Now, the question comes, the food web. What is food web? Just I am changing the color. Just see here. I am telling you something about food web. Food web. So now see, in grassland ecosystem, one chain we are taken. Whether what chain we are taken, the same thing is adapted in the nature? No, not at all. We will take two or more than two food chains. Okay, if single chain you are taking, we are calling it as a food chain. If suppose two or more than two food chains, they interact with each other, then definitely we are calling it as a food web. So, food chain and food web. In case of food chain, only one chain is observed. But food web, minimum two are required and it may be more than two. Then the food web is formed. So, we will take another example here. The grass. Grass is eaten by only rabbit. No. So, grass may be eaten by grasshopper. The grasshopper you can take. Grass, grass is eaten by grasshopper. Same time, grasshopper is eaten by a frog. 
Now, frog is eaten by a snake. Then, the snake is eaten by a hawk. Now see, grasshopper, frog, snake, hawk. This is second food chain. I am taking one more food chain here and I am changing the color. Just see, the grass again is eaten by, take one more example. Here, bison. Then bison is eaten by hyena. Hyena is eaten by the tiger. Okay. So, three food chains I consider. Now see, whether any rule is there in the nature, the frog has to eat only grasshopper or else the rabbit has to eat only the grass. It may eat a carrot, it may eat a some other plant and in the same way fox, fox is having any uh, rule that it has to eat only rabbit. No, fox can be, uh, fox can eat a bison, fox can eat a grasshopper, fox can eat a snake. So that is the interconnections you are observing. So here we will connect it. That will come to know here the frog and rabbit. Okay. So here hyena, hyena can eat a rabbit. Then hyena can eat a frog because it is a scavenger. Then Sometimes hyena can eat a snake. Okay, this is one. Then again, fox can eat a bison. Fox can eat frog. Sometimes fox can eat a grasshopper also. Now next, fox can eat a snake. So see, take one more example. I can change the color again here. Now see, the lion, lion can eat bison. The lion can eat hyena. Then lion can eat fox, lion can eat frog, lion can eat snake. In the same way the tiger, then lion can eat rabbit also. Now see, the tiger can eat rabbit, the tiger can eat bison. The tiger can eat fox, it can eat a snake, then it can eat a bigger frog. So see, in this diagram, you can see a network like structure here. And this network itself, we are calling it as the interrelationship between the food chains and that itself we are calling it as a food web. So, hope it is very clear to you. Now, in this way, you observe a food web here, the different tropic levels, they are interacting with each other and such a type of two or more than two food chains, they are interconnected in the ecosystem then you are calling it as a food web. So in this way, the food web you observe. Now, we will go back to our questions. Now see, environmental biology, 
in this classical plants group succession some headings are given and here the questions are actually intermixed we'll see the next the question number abecinia rhizophora and apiplex are a xerophytes b halophytes c hydrophytes then d mesophytes so here the abecinia usually you are knowing the mangrove plants mangrove plants are growing on the seashore where the roots are negatively geotropic some of the roots they are coming out of the soil and these roots are having many number of pores on the body and to which the exchange of gas is taking place so in this way the plants are getting the different uh, gases so see here avicennia rhizophora and apiplex are xerophytes halophytes hydrophytes mesophytes here there are nothing but halophytes they are neither xerophytes hydrophytes or mesophytes so halophytes is the right answer we will move to the next which of the following is not a hydrophytic angiosperm it is not hydrophytic angiosperm what is angiosperm angiosperm is one the plants which bear a flower those all called as angiosperms so see here cara hydrilla lotus water lettuce so here the cara is a best example it is a submerged uh, plant found in the pond ecosystem and it is not bearing any flowers so which of the following is not a hydrophytic angiosperm they are so cara is not a hydrophytic angiosperm it is a submerged plant which is found inside the water so next one in ecological succession from pioneer to climax community the biomass share just see decrease increase and then decrease no relation increase continuously here in case of climax community the biomass shall increase continuously option d is the correct one next mechanical tissue is undeveloped in where mechanical tissue is not at all developed just see xerophytes hydrophytes halophytes mesophytes why mechanical tissue is required to support the plant body okay and it has to protect itself from the environmental calamities so as a result here hydrophytic plants they are not at all required any mechanical tissues because they are freely floating on in the water and because of that buoyancy itself the water uh, the plant it maintains itself so the correct option is hydrophytes option b is the right one next which one is partially submerged and fixed in a mud in pond ecosystem i am given some of the examples which is, which is submerged partially half submerged and it is rooted and half part comes out of the body or the water body now see the options marsilia cypress ecornia typha yeah the best example is the typha typha is the plant which is partially submerged and fixed in a mud so type option b is the right one next now succession is serial succession is just see the options series of physical changes that occurs in an area development of biotic communities on a bare area 
series of biotic communities that appear in a previously bare area than both A and B. But here the right answer is option C, series of biotic communities that appear in previously bare area. Next one. In succession, the cereal farms are in succession, the cereal farms are large sized, long lived, small sized and slow growing. They are option C, small sized plants. Next, succession on secondary bare area is primoseed, zero seed, sub seed and none of the above. That is the sub C. It is called the sub C. So, option C sub C is the right one. Now, see the next. Secondary succession occurs on where secondary succession is occurring. Burnt lands, limber lands, cut wood lands and all of these. So, see. The secondary succession in the sense, primarily the plants used to be, because of the nature, they are eradicated, but their debris will be there in the particular area and secondary succession starts. So here, the burnt lands, they are the examples, then limbar lands, they are the examples, cutwood lands, they are the examples, these are the areas everywhere the secondary succession is taking place. So, option D, all of these is the right one. Next, plant succession is a process. What dash process it is? Just see, definite, then haphazard, unique, unimportant, unimportant, then none of these. So, here it is a definite process. So, plant succession is a definite process. Option A is the correct one. Next. In submerged plants, just see, anaerobic respiration is a rule. Aerobic respiration occurs by utilizing dissolved oxygen of water. Anaerobic and aerobic respiration takes place simultaneously. Then none of the above. Yeah, the correct answer is aerobic respiration occurs by utilizing dissolved oxygen of the water. So, option B is the correct one. Next, mangrove forests are found in Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal, Himachal Pradesh. So, I told you the mangroves where they are growing, they are growing near the seashore. So, the correct option is option C, West Bengal. West Bengal is the place where you are getting the mangroves. Next, water plants provide dash to water animals. What water plants are produce, uh, giving to water animals? Just see, oxygen and food, water and carbon dioxide, food and water, shelter and shade. Definitely, they are giving oxygen and food material to the animals. So, option A is the right one. Next, the early settler on a barren area are, early settler, the settler on a barren area are, just see, ferns, mosses, lichens, diatoms, they are definitely a lichens. Lichens are usually growing on bare lands and bare rocks. Whatever the white patches you are observing on the wood or a rock, that is nothing but a lichen. Here, algal and fungal association you are observing. Mutualism you are observing. So, lichen is the right answer. Option C. Next. A community which starts succession in a habitat is just see, pioneer community, cereal community, biotic community, Eco C it is a pioneer community, beginning community. So, option A, pioneer community is the right one. Next, 
Mangrove vegetation is found in. Again the same. See, mangrove vegetation where you are finding. Again the mangrove plants, they are growing on the seashore. Just see, options. Dehradun Valley, Kulu Valley, Western Ghats and uh, Sundarbans. Here, the correct answer is option B, Sundarbans. Next, alpine plants which are commonly found at the top of mountains show. Just see, xerophytism, hydrophytism, semitism, then now above. Alpine plants which are commonly found at the top of mountains show. Alpine because the availability of water is very less. So they are showing a xerophytism. Option A is the correct one. Next. Ephemerals are xerophytes that are. Ephemerals are xerophytes that are. Drop enduring. Drought escaping, <coughs> drought resisting, none of the above. They are drought escaping. So, option B is the correct one. Next, plants growing in saline and marshy conditions are common. Just see, lithophytes, mesophytes, halophytes, and semophytes. They are called Halophytes. So, option C, halophytes is the correct answer. Next, the vegetation of Delhi is chiefly, in Delhi what kind of vegetation you are observing? Hydrophytic, xerophytic, mesophytic, halophytic. It is definitely option C, mesophyte. Mesophytic plants are seen there. Next, so dear friends, we discuss today regarding food chain and food web. In coming class, we have to dis uh, discuss something about the community ecology. So, in community ecology, how one is benefited, how another is harmed, and what all names we are giving, that we will discuss. Because, see, this environmental biology is very very important again I am repeating and it will be helpful to all kinds of competitive exams. So friends, we will stop here. Thank you.